carry weapons in here, right? Guns here. If I start pushing my weapon here, tipping out this way, I can give him my gun, right? That's all bad. I'm in a bad spot right here. So I want to keep everything uh, in my uh, advantage as possible. So we always practice how we play in here. We can keep that weapon side back every time. As he comes, we're going to create that space. Right? And he, may not, he might not be coming straight in on you, right? So we got to be able to move side to side. Keep that backhand for uh, posting and turning. Keep that hand up in a defensive position to block anything that's going to happen. He comes in too. That's a post. And I'm not using this leg here because if he comes up, I can kick him in the knee. I can stop him in the shin. Good solid attack. Then we'll come up. We'll do our, uh, our technical get up here in a little bit. Right now, we're just going to work on our creating our distance. Right? So straight across the mat. These are useless. I think it's beneficial when you don't hit your head on the ground. Okay. And a lot of, uh, I used to think about that like, I would never do that in the field. That's going to hurt really bad, right? But you're going to take some battle damage using the asphalt or concrete, but you're not going to be out of the fight. So we're on a good, uh, good break fall first, okay? If you're not super good at them, you can come sit, chin to your chest, back, five or 90 degree angle, right? Disperse all that energy out. And then we're gonna come back up, but I don't wanna come forward. I want to come up, same thing as their uh, creating distance space, right? I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna lift up with that posting foot, hips off the ground, and then I'm gonna subtract myself. Okay, as we come up, just got in a fight, weapons come loose. We're gonna check our weapon side, make sure it's still there. Take a couple steps back and repeat. Break fall, get it, across, okay? Be mindful of break falls. As you're subtracting, if I'm coming here and I'm half past it, I'm only coming here. So Jason's coming at me and I'm coming up. If I keep right here, I'm going right back over. Okay, but if I get up right and I'm back here, I've got my base. You can see why. So the way I always remember is you, if you're posted back, you want your foot to go farther than, than your post as you're coming up. Uh, so now we're gonna uh, sprawl, okay? So one thing we add in the sprawl in, the cl uh, in this class is a hip check. So as somebody's shooting out on you, they're gonna be coming forward. Instead of just stopping them, with our sprawl, we're gonna stop them with our hip. So you're gonna use your hip, it's almost like you're punching them, right? Right as they're driving in on you. So that's gonna look like this, okay? Not like this, okay? I'm thinking literally the point of my hip that I'm pushing through their body, right? I'm meaning force with force as that happens. Once I hit, boom. Uh, those are, we can start slow with the sprawl, okay? Hands to the mat, and then you're gonna drop your hips down, okay? Back up, take a couple steps back, and we move again. Hit. Sprawl. I know it's kind of cold in here, right? Um, but ideally what we're gonna want in a sprawl in the field is creating as much surface tension as possible with our with our body. Because if he's really driving into us and our toes are here, it's not a whole lot of uh, that that uh, friction. If you can, get the tops of your foot down. Wearing shoes is obviously easier. We're not that burden. It's really cold in here this morning. But uh, if you can, get the tops of your foot on the mat. If not, toes are fine. But how it's gonna look, if Justin takes that shot on you real quick, it's here. And it doesn't look like much, okay? But uh, Professor Sean's done this to me, and we're really done. I, I always say, like, when, when Professor Sean does it, it feels like you're, you're tackling a fire hydrant. It's, you're literally just falling, right? So work on it a little bit. Think about that extension with that drive, and then back to the sprawl. Same thing as we're coming back, right? Checking our weapon, making sure it's still attached where we want it. Get that muscle memory right here. I take a couple steps back. Do it again. Go. Coming in, same thing, 
coming in. Whoops. I just hit a wall. Can't go back any further, right? If I just get up like this, the bad guy right here, I'm down. That's all bad, okay? So we're gonna learn how to get up appropriately here. So, same thing, post. I'm gonna bring this knee to the crack of the wall. That's a solid base. I can defend from here if I need to. Not only that, but if I'm trying to, to pull his legs out and get him back down, it's a lot tougher. Right? So, I'm coming up with the hips. Hips. Right? I don't necessarily want to come up here. That's not a really good base. Right? The shoulder walk up. Okay? If I can come up here with my hips, I'm steady. He comes in on me, we can start working on our circling against the wall and flipping the script a little bit. But super important uh, to get up right. So once again, great ball. Create that distance. Here. Here. We're gonna do that for two minutes, okay? Instead of putting your knee in the crack, just try to come up. Right. So if you're coming back, so come up like this. Here, instead of like that. Okay. Whoa. Big difference. Yeah. Right? Okay. And you're weightless right there. I mean, it, it doesn't take much to get up. Because they're teaching less of this and more of this, which I have a little bit more control because now I've got bit. some weight on his hips. Right? Okay. But I can still come up, I can build my base. And then we're in a fight, right? So, in a, uh, in a perfect world, everybody's gonna comply. We know that doesn't happen. If I feign compliance, Right, like I just want to suck you into my uh, my bubble, right? So yeah, okay, I'm am getting down, I'm getting down. He comes up on me. I build my base, and now we're here, all right? Now it's now we're in a fight, so we want to try to isolate that early. So if that's how I'm building my base, we're gonna to want to staple that uh, that leg to the mat so I can't build it up, right? <clears throat> So, I mean, situation is always going to dictate. If I can, I always come in in the lower half of the body. Okay? Once I come in, my knee goes to the inside in between his legs. To the ground. Now I have a staple. Only problem here is my foot, the way we normally do it is with your toes up, he still has the room to, to suck his leg out. Okay? But if I put the top of my toe down, now, I'm north of his knee. You guys can come around and see if you want. My toes are out. Top of my toes touching the mat. My knees touching the mat on the inside. Okay? Now, no hands. Try and get up, Jason. Yeah. Okay. I can get one up, right? That's not doing but anything for what me. What do I have? I have two free hands, right? So if he's, if he's using that leg to try and get up, now, here we go. Okay, from here, he can't do much. The only thing he can try, do, try and do now is drive forward. And when he does that, what does he give you? His hands. Right? Um, 
we'll start with this and then we'll go to when they when they bury their hands what to do but we love the knee right that controls the top end of the lever right controlling that next joint the next group of uh of bone and muscle if i go too high on him right i'm a teeter-totter i got little legs he's got big quads all right so if i come all the way up here i mean that's really nothing i'm not i'm not based or anything right so if i come right above the knee now i might be able I might not be able to flatten my foot out, right? To get all that surface pressure. But I can still maintain that surface pressure. And I'm still in control of him. He's still got to bear my weight here, right? Comes right at almost knee on belly ish. Okay? Same thing. He's not going to really want to move this leg. He's going to move this one. And then that's when we come here and to the lever, right? Here, here, here. Come in here. You can step him up. I want to do this, but he overpowers me. I can't get it set. I can back away still. I'm not too sucked in here to, to move, All right? Once you get the controls in place, it's a little bit difficult, a little bit more difficult for him to move and get out of the way. You can kind of you own him at that point when I get that other foot up or I cross it up to his foot's in my hip, which we'll show in a little bit. But just that initial touch, because that's where it's going to go bad real quick, is that initial here. Um, but if I feel him do that, and I'm not ready to, to get down right there. Just get out of here. Create some distance. Go to a different weapon system. Okay? All right. Yeah, your right side. Can you get up? No. I'll keep not this one to talk. <laughs> not to me on the ground. With my knee? Yeah. Do you feel the pressure on it? Yeah. Now, see how you blow <laughs> my, my knee right now? So, yeah. put your foot down. Your left foot. Kick top. it down on that. Yeah. There no. you go. Oh, hit it. Yeah, that way. Can you go down? Yep. Push it all the way down. So what I'll do from here is I'll grab it here. If I the toes. The only thing I can do is like just like move this way. Right. Even when you're really strong. It, so that's a little bit better. Hips. Give me your hands. Give me your hands. Give me your hands. Right. So he he came up a bit, right? I can't get here. I don't want to do this. He, he did that enough. If I come in here. He's gonna trap my arm. That's a little too much. I need him to press, okay? Top of the head. He's not gonna like that. After a little bit of time, right? Or I can come here, expose to the cuff, right? We've got a couple different options from here. But the main goal here is that I have this foot in my hip joint, right? Kind of riding the lightning a little bit. Can you get up? Can you move? Mm. All right. Nope. Now I'm hipping him. He could maybe go forward if he's really strong here and tries to kick towards me and try to slide. But I'll probably hold here. That keeps that pressure on him. All right. <clears throat> so a couple of the attacks we're going to do to get his hands up. Like I said, I don't really like fishing in here. I just, if you got a wrestler, somebody tight, they're gonna pinch your arm in, they might roll you, that might do something. So, uh, pushing the crown of the head, not the back of the head, the crown of the head, right? End of the lever, this is the lever, uh, into the ground. After a while of pushing his face into the, the ground, he's not gonna <coughs> like that. At some point, he's going to when try you, to bench. When you push on someone's face you know, or, or head, what, normally what do they do? Right. Right, so when he pushes my head down, I'm naturally gonna try and, and counter it. And when I do and he lets his pressure off, my head's gonna come up, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I um, mean, it sounds silly, but it works. Depending on size difference, right? Justin's a little too big uh, to where I feel like if I reach for this one, right? Up above his brow, nose, uh, ridge area up here, you can peel that head up pretty good and it's pretty painful, right? Always mindful of not doing this so we don't get bit, right? Lose our fingers. It's, it's right about right that orbital area, right? Uh, it gets pretty painful and they're gonna move their head. But if I have to reach too far, you'll feel it. Um, if I and they're fighting. Hey, hey, give me your other hand, give me your other hand. It's, oh no, fuck you. So same thing. Put it down. I came back around right here handed that handcuff to this hand. So now I've got this up here, and that's exactly what they did. And then here we go. 
That was neat. I didn't even have to do any paperwork on that one. What we want them to do is give themselves to us. That's not comfortable at all, and I want that pain to stop. So I'm going to give myself to him at that point, right? Please take my arm. I need this to stop. Um, it's just a lot of pressure, but if you see how he exposed my hand, if I don't willingly give it to him, I've created an opening to allow him to access the end of that lever right here. Remember, grab that, those fingers. So yeah, when I'm, when I'm, so if we don't allow him to move, and that's the other thing too, right? We talk about pain compliance. Is it really pain compliance? Or am I controlling him and his resistance to the control is causing him pain? To me, that sounds like a him problem, right? He's the one causing his pain. I'm just holding him down. And that's what we're after, control. Like, uh, uh, you know, we're creeping up on a house, we're, you know, even, even on a building search manual, we're gonna talk to each other a little bit, right? Same thing here. Hey, partner, just control his upper, right? Keep those hands away, away from me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take care of his uh, lower legs. Or, or even talk about it before. Hey, this is how we're gonna approach this next time this happens. But we have to talk to each other. Because how many times you guys been in a, in a, a scrap in the street with a partner? Being hit by your partner. <laughs> Seriously, you're trying to do something and yeah, you can't because they're in the way. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, you, I, I think we've it. all seen that 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 picture or video of that dude who's like doing a carotid on the back of he's got his partner in a carotid and his partner's on top of the bad guy. <laughs> I don't know if you ever seen that one. It's terrible. It's terrible. So we got to talk to each other. All right. I call it cock blocking. Ah, that's a good way. Absolutely. You know exactly what you're going to do and what you need to do to get there, and, and your partner's right there in the way. 100%. Doing absolutely nothing. Right? <laughs> like or partners. hurting you instead. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you got anything else on this one? No. Uh, those are the ones that I pretty much stick with. You're not going to jail. You're going to be down in prone. Okay? Good guy um, is the gun. Okay. Bad guy, untie their knot. That's all I need you to do. Bad guy. He's like, 100%. Take him to jail. Jail time. He's controlled. Stop that gift wrap life. Get that, get that gun. She ain't going to jail. Don't go to jail. Good. Get that underhook. Good. Take her to jail. Take her to jail.
laws of jujitsu, we all just gravitate. <laughs> I know it is. Every time. I really am. Every time. Magnet. Escape, escape. Oh. Oh. All right, I'm gonna be the last. Don't give up, you got a minute left. He's a big teddy bear. Keep trying. Tense. Good. Good. <laughs> I'm chill. Look at that. And time. Good job. You didn't die. Yeah. <laughs> How'd it go? Really good. He has a, nice. a good uh, control of my free arm. Well, and then the arm is it's like uh, trying to grab his gun. See, all y'all guys got to show up and get trained. You want to, you want to. If you are a part of one of these, you should be training. You should be here. Kid friendly, yeah. And back to the action. He's not going to jail. He's not going. He said, Take me. Ooh, get out of there. You're being controlled right now. You're being controlled. There you go. You're being, oh, oh, there you go. Head butt, move. Head butt, move. There you go. You're like, I'm not going back. I'm not going back. There you go. There. shows you you're never safe. Okay? If I'm focused on weapon retention, all of this is open. If I'm solely focused on defending submissions, this guy's open. Right? So that's where you get so tired, because you're constantly checking everything. Right? It happens. The belt is actually harder to untie than taking a weapon out of a holster. Right, um, I roll with our world to survive, and are with our recruits, and they work on that. And I'll take a gun out in the first couple seconds of the roll, because it's so easy. If you know what you're doing, right? Uh, getting the dexterity to untie the belt in a live roll, it's kind of tough. So the idea is to show you, defend this harder to get than a gun thing, and teach you all the bad things that are going to happen to you while that's going on. So, um, appreciate you guys coming out. One thing I say to most of the classes at some point during the instruction is that ineffective force has the appearance of excessive force. If you don't know what you're doing, it looks bad. It makes a terrible movie, right? Um, you watch uh, these videos of these officers, the deputies, try and take some in custody, you know what the hell they're doing. It just looks like a beat down, but the person's still fighting, so they're really not applying effective force. 
because if they're applying effective force, that person would have been knocked down or controlled. And that doesn't happen. So if you're going to use force, it's justified by your policy and your department and the law, it needs to be effective. Go big. Don't, don't half-ass a strike. Don't half-ass getting away from a bad guy. Ones, your partners, no one likes to hear fucking bagpipes, right? Don't let it be you. The only way you can make sure that that isn't you is by coming here, aside from doing all your other training. Make the time. This drill sucks, but this drill is very real for us. You know, there's every single call you go to, there's a gun. You know that because you bring it with you. And what good is it if you can't protect it? You know, uh, it's a game changer even for, for practitioners like us who have been doing it for, for a decade. Once you bring that element into it, we've got to change, we had to change our game. You know, there's a lot of things that I used to do that I absolutely will not do now for that very reason that I'm exposing my tools. Um, it's humbling, it's very, very humbling, especially when you're a purple belt and your professor says, hey, to this white belt, all you gotta do is untie his knot, and the, and the white belt's untying your knot. You know, it's a game changer. But it also allows you to feel when people are going for your weapons and whatnot. Now, when I'm in the streets, every time I get into the mix, my mindset is, is what, what's the status of my, of my weapon? You know, it's just automatic, you know, because we've been training it. Um, before that, I don't even think I thought of it. You know, yeah, yeah, I got my weapons, but I'm safe, you know. Um, you guys got to train. Uh, I mean, T, you know, I mean, we, we work in a violent, violent place, you know, and, and unfortunately, I think the, the level of experience in, in t defensive tactics as time goes on gets a little less and a little less with every generation that comes to patrol, you know. You're training a girl that's, what, 5'4", 100 pounds, maybe, you know? <laughs> um, the only way she's, the only way she's gonna have a chance with a guy my size or your size is technique, you know? Uh, like Jason said, we owe it to our families. We owe it to our families, you know? And that's, when I started this, that's what I would tell my wife, well, hey, why don't you skip training? No, I can't, I can't skip training. Why? Because I owe it to you to go and train. That way I'm prepared when when I'm out there, you know? Half of it too is knowing what your limits are. Knowing what, what you can do and what your confidence level is, you know? I go into it now and I know, hey, if it reaches this point, I'm in trouble, you know? Uh, there's a lot of scraps that I can get into where I know it's like, hey, I'm not in danger. You know, I don't have to step it up. And then when it, when it gets to that point, I know like, hey, now I need to step it up, you know? Um, I appreciate you guys coming. It was a small class, but it was kind of cool because it got a little, little more intimate with, with a smaller class. Um, if there's anything that you guys would like to see or, or go over or, or train, any type of technique or scenario, bring it to us. We'll, we'll hammer it out. Uh, I just want to tee up a couple things that you just brought up. Uh, learning to feel when somebody's going for a gun, it's huge in here, all right? start connecting those dots and learning we talk about you know gun retention we want our underhooks strike defense we want our overhook all right you got to make sure those marry up with whatever you're holding a weapon on if she's going for your if somebody's going for your gun you want that underhook you don't you want to keep them from getting to that point and then working your other techniques to, to even add on to that okay um, we do this class for first responders we don't do this for just cops medical personnel, our fire personnel, uh, they are also in incredibly dangerous jobs. And the shitty part is, is they're dealing with the same assholes that we deal with, okay? The same tweakers, the same criminals, the same people with bad intentions, right? They deal with, except they don't have guns, they don't have tasers, they don't have any of the fun tools, or they don't go through an academy to learn even the basics of self-defense at all. Not you to know? mention, they may be your closest back. Absolutely. She's uh, dealing with some, somebody that's in the street, not via us, but they're handcuffed. They, they're on their bed, they want to attack her. She's got to know what to do. She still has stuff, but she might have a syringe on her. A pen is a, is a, is a good stabbing of pen. The stethoscope, that's a choke all day. So she's got to take the time to come in here to learn how to defend herself. The same with 
thing with our fire personnel. Our fire personnel that work in dangerous areas too. Uh, maybe they're, they're not always the uh, staging kind. Maybe they don't stage and they get there before we do. And now they're in a fight or somebody's, you know, has bad intentions. This class is designed for all of you. We love this, we've talked about this before. Uh, this class means a lot to us. Uh, it means a lot to Professor Sean. Uh, we feel we owe it to our partners out here to, to give you guys that next level. We just need you guys to come in. We need you guys to devote that time to uh, doing better. We do something different every week. We try to address different topics, stuff we might see on social media, on the news, uh, personal experience that you guys have dealt with uh, that you just want to find a better way to do it. Okay? That's what we're all about. So anytime you can hit us up on the uh, Instagram uh, group or whatever we have, the uh, Instagram page. First responders class. First responders class. Uh, hey, I saw this the other day. What would you guys do? And we'll break it down. You know, If Sean, uh, Professor Sean can't figure it out, we might have an answer. We can't figure it out, Professor Sean will have an answer. We all work together on all this stuff. So please just communicate with us and keep showing up. But thank you guys. Jason likes to say the ineffective force speech. Mine is, train to be the guy that you want rolling to you when you're out there getting your ass kicked. If you don't know, and we all know, know that one guy on our shift that, I don't, oh God, I, I hope it's not him that's responding to you. If you don't know who that guy is on your shift, you're probably that guy. So. <laughs> 100%. Thank you. <laughs> Do you want you back in your